Hi guys, Andrew here with headphones.com. Today we're going to take a look at a headphone that I've had requested probably more than any other headphone in recent memory, and it is the Hi-Fi Man Edition XS planar magnetic over-ear open back headphone that comes in right at around $500. As usual, I've not been paid to say anything in particular about this headphone, and all thoughts and opinions are my own. Now just before we get going here, if you guys are curious for more information on this headphone, or if I haven't explained it all in this video, uh, there will be links in the description for that where you can see more of the measurements that are done that I've posted up on the headphone community forum, along with an EQ that you can try out for yourself with this. If you're looking for this stuff before I do the review, if you're looking for information on a product, um, that's where I will I will post it ahead of time. It's always going to be up on the headphone community forum there first. So that's sort of like the advanced preview of these uh, these videos, and not just from me, but from the other reviewers on this channel as well. Now, let's dive right into the review here, guys, and I want to let you know what's all going on here with these different headphones here. You see four different headphones, including this one, on the table. Um, so, in my hand, I have the Edition XS. To my right here, this is the Sundara 2020. Right here, we have the Ananda. Um, also, this was a unit from 2021. I don't, I don't find any revisions with these ones. Um, and then this is the Aria Stealth. Now, I do also have an Aria V2 over there, So um, and I did compare it with that one as well, but I think the more interesting comparison is with the V3. So, I'll be comparing it against these throughout the video later on when we talk about sound quality. But let's begin with build quality, design, and comfort first. And this is an area where I think the Edition XS dramatically improves on all of the existing designs here. You'll notice that the cups actually look very similar to what's going on with the Ananda here. It has that same sort of window shade grill. Um, the colorway is also similar. It's that black and kind of silvery color here. But importantly, they've moved to the same yoke structure and headband design that they have on all their new headphones, like what they have on the Deva and the HE6 SE V2 um, through Adorama and you know a number of other you know headphones that have come out in the last little bit. And this headband structure is far superior, and I know there's people who don't like this headband structure, but I'm going to say that this headband structure is far superior to the old one for one particular reason, and it's that you get cup swivel. Let me just show you guys that, right? The cups do pivot slightly. Not a lot, but they do give you a little bit of movement here. Now, I think where some of the mixed opinions show up with this headband design is the top piece because it's not a suspension style design, but thankfully this headphone is also reasonably lightweight. So I didn't have any issues with it creating a hot spot on top of my head or anything like that. And this also allows for slightly less clamp force, meaning that when I put it on here, Obviously, I'm wearing a hat right now, and I don't wear hats for actually evaluating. It's just because fashion. But when I when I put it on, it is way more comfortable than any of these other ones, except for the Aria, which is about on par with this one. So mainly, my, my gripe is with this traditional design here, where there's not enough uh, actual swivel going on here, so it didn't... It always created this pressure on my jaw. As much as I, I like both of these headphones a lot, the, the comfort was something that like you kind of had to get used to a little bit. Additionally, the arm and yoke structure is a little bit different even from the Aria's design here and some of the previous designs with this same headband um, in that it is all one piece, whereas on the Aria and some of those other designs they have several different pieces, like the arm is separate from the yoke. Um, and so having all one piece means that there are fewer failure points, which is nice. Now one area where this design doesn't feel particularly premium still is that these pieces are still kind of plasticky and cheap feeling. They still feel a little bit rickety. And so that's not great, but I think that's the trade-off for you know being able to have this kind of design, which in my opinion is just better. One last thing before we get into the sound quality here is that the cable for the Edition XS is similar to Hi-Fi Man's more recent cables uh, in that it is much, much, much nicer and much better than the previous ones that they had. This is an ergonomically excellent cable. It is still a little bit microphonic though in the top parts, but it is generally fine. Now, let's talk about the sound quality next, and let's just begin by drivability. This one does take a little bit more power than what I found the, with the Ananda. So really, with all these Hi-Fi Man headphones, if you're mainly going to be running this off of like a dongle or, you know, one of those little Bluetooth DAC things, um, the Ananda is the one that is going to be better suited for that, whereas these other ones, I think you're, you're meant to use it with a, a standalone desktop amplifier of some kind. Now, as far as my testing went, um, as usual, I tested it off of a wide, ra wide range of equipment, but the one I spent the most time with was the Violet HPA V550, which is over there. Um, and then I also ran this off of a couple of other sources like the um, Kyan IH6, the SPL Fonitor X, and the THX AAA1. And in all cases, I had no problem driving this. So you don't need anything crazy to power this. Um, you can get away with much more modest source equipment than what you would uh, want for something like an HE6 or HE6 SE V2 or something like that. In any case, with the sound quality, let's begin by talking about all the objective stuff, the frequency response and tonal balance. And I'm going to do this a little bit differently this time around because I want to show you guys the sound signature 
signature first. And what do I mean by sound signature? Well, the main problem with using a frequency response relative to a target, which is what I commonly use, is that the target is smooth to one third or one half octave. Well, what does that mean? Basically what that means is that the targets that get used for this kind of stuff are very coarse grained and the headphones frequency response is much more fine grained than that. And so in order to make it more of an apples to apples comparison here for sound signature to get a general sense of the tonal balance, whether it's neutral, warm, V-shaped, bright or whatever, I'm going to smooth them to the same degree and then hopefully you can get a sense of that. And then we'll go into the more fine grained stuff afterwards. And of course, I hope this also helps you know, to explain that you know, there's more to frequency response than just target adherence. Um, this is just one example or one thing that we can evaluate frequency response in terms of. And so let's do that now. Um, so with the HiFiMan Edition XS, you can see that this headphone is mostly neutral just with like a hint of character in a couple of places. I would consider this actually to be slightly on the U-shaped or V-shaped side of things. Not not totally, but you can see that there's a little bit of a cutout there in the mids and there's also a little bit of a boost in the upper treble and that's the general trend for this headphone. The rest of it is pretty darn neutral as far as I'm concerned. And we'll do some more comparisons later, but I'm actually just going to let you know the sound signature of all of these. With the Sundara, you have the most neutral, at least the 2020 version here, you have the most neutral of all of these. So it's not as V-shaped there. It's a little bit more linear there across the board. Um, with the Ananda, you have, again, a little bit more neutral than the... Uh, Edition XS, but it also does have that slight cutout there in the mids. It just doesn't have the up, as much upper treble uh, brightness. And then with the Aria, you have um, the most neutral bright, I would say, uh, of the bunch because it is just a little bit more boosted there in the treble. Still balanced again, and with the V3, it's a little more balanced than the V2. Um, but I'd still consider the Aria to be neutral bright. So for your serious audiophile music, jazz and acoustic and classical, that the Aria sound signature would probably be the one to go for. But I hope that kind of gives you a general sense here. Um, and now let's look at the more fine-grained stuff here. I find the Edition XS to be a little, just a little bit um, thick and I'm not going to say swollen, but it's just a little thick there in the lower mids and upper bass. And I think that's largely emphasized as a result of that mid-range cut. And then in the upper, upper treble, like at around 12k, you see basically where the stealth magnets, um, which is, you know, IFMN's latest magnet technology that they put in all their headphones now, the stealth magnets are boosting the upper air frequencies with this headphone. And in my view, that is the only thing that I'm going to nitpick with the frequency response here. That upper treble boost I don't think is necessary. I mean, it's going to depend a little bit on the age of the listener, how much you're bothered by that. But for me, it has this just this little bit of that sort of zingy quality that is not there on the Sundara and on the Ananda. But with that said, there are also very good reasons to go for the Edition XS over the Ananda, which is more expensive. And that has to do with the resonance frequency of the driver, which... Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, when you decouple the headphones from the side of the head and create what is essentially an air gap between the headphone and the side of your head, the bass has a tendency to boost because there is a resonance there. Uh, not on all planars, it depends on the driver damping, but on these ones they're all fairly undamped, so um, the bass will rise there. And where that resonance is, where that bass rises, is actually lower on the Edition XS than it is on the Ananda. And this is also partially related to the design of this headphone, which I think is really clever. You have less clamp force on the Edition XS than on the Ananda, and you also have a little bit more cup swivel here than on the Ananda. This means that on the Edition XS you actually have a good chance of getting a less strong seal, if that makes sense, than you would on the Ananda, depending on, on you know, how the coupling is on your head, just because it's not as clampy, right? Um, but that doesn't matter because the resonance frequency is so low on the Edition XS that the bass isn't going to drop out. Rather, it's actually going to boost. So there is a sense in which this is very clever. You're getting a potential bass boost when there isn't a coupling, and when there is a coupling, you get perfectly linear bass extension. And so I think the design overall, given that there's cup swivel here and it's, it's not as clampy, I think that design makes more sense than what you get with the Ananda here, and it makes more sense than what you get with the Sundara 2020. So I hope that gives you a general sense of where the Edition XS fits within the lineup here um, for the tonal balance. It's, again, very similar to you know, the rest of these, um, just a, a little bit more uh, sparkle in the upper, upper registers. Uh, and then because of that lower resonance frequency, there's a chance that it can be a little bit bassier as well, uh, depending on, again, how the seal is on your particular head. Now, that's basically it for the objective stuff. And as I mentioned, there's measurements done of this up on the headphone community forum with comparisons to the Ananda as well. So you can see kind of how they compare. 
But now let's dive into the subjective stuff and talk all about how this was uh, just, you know, listening to it subjectively. And I'm going to begin by talking about detail and resolution and all of that stuff. So overall for detail, I actually hear the Edition XS as being very similar to that of the Ananda. The only thing is that the Ananda has a little bit more emphasis there at 3K, and I think that does... Um, you know, convey a little bit of an extra benefit to clarity for trailing ends of tones for things like piano tones and, you know, those types of instruments. Um, I hear them just like a little bit more clearly there on the Ananda, but again, I, I think that's mostly just down to its frequency response in the upper mids. And again, you know, there's the chance that all of this is frequency response anyways. So, um, but, you know, subjectively, I, I hear them very, very close to one another. And then I actually had somebody asking about how the Edition XS compares to the Aria. Uh, even though they're not even in the same price bracket whatsoever. And really, I think doing that comparison just recently um, kind of solidified it for me. But yeah, I mean, it was it was a noticeable difference between both the Ananda and, and the Edition XS and the, and the Aria, right? Like these two were very similar and then the Aria was like, you know, the next jump. Sort of this like extra layer of depth and distance and separation, if that makes sense. Like not spaciousness overall, because they're both quite good for that. Um, and lateral definition, especially on the Edition XS, is fantastic. But there's just an extra sense of being able to isolate the individual instrument lines with the uh, Aria that, when compared to the Ananda and the Edition XS. And of course, as I mentioned, all of this is potentially just frequency response. It's just that we're not analyzing frequency response in terms of these qualities yet. Um, and for macro contrast and that sort of sense of punchiness, this is definitely better than what you get on the Ananda. Again, I, I point to the resonance frequency being lower as a potential reason for that, but I did also get a seal on the Ananda, so I don't know how much of a role that played. Um, still, that is the key difference among these, and I find the Edition XS to be a little bit closer to the Sundara for that sense of punchiness and that contrast quality. Uh, and that's a good thing, in my opinion, because I think the Sundara does it better than the Ananda does. So I think the bottom line for that is that, you know, while they're not the most punchy and dynamic and impactful sounding headphones, um, it's certainly also not on the compressed side. So, you know, it's still sufficiently lively down low. And then lastly for timbre, and this is a quality I've been paying a lot more attention to lately because I've heard things like the 7 Hertz Timeless that are like really noticeable for that quality. And um, I'm not particularly bothered by it on the Edition XS. I think it's actually totally fine there. Um, it is still recognizably a planar though. So it has that kind of plucked character to it. Okay, so that's basically it for the Edition XS, and I would normally do comparisons here, but I've been doing them throughout, so I think you guys get a good sense. Um, and I'm going to give my conclusion here. Is it is the Edition XS worth it? Um, well, I think that actually Edition XS is very aggressively priced. Uh, you know, I was thinking to myself, which one of these would I buy? Sundar 2020, Ananda, or Edition XS? And... You know, as much as I prefer the frequency response of the Sundara 2020, the Edition XS, I think, is the one that I would buy strictly because of the design implementation here of, you know, the different headband style with a little bit of swivel there, plus having a lower resonance frequency means that I don't have to worry as much about the seal and the coupling, even though, again, it was fine on the Ananda for me. Um, and then I just EQ that, you know, top uh, upper treble bit down a little bit and, um, you know, fill in the mids a little bit. Then, yeah, I think for me, it would be the Edition XS. I think this is the one that I would end up buying. You know, I think comparing the Edition XS to the Ananda, you really have to care about a little bit of a better balance between upper mids and treble that you get from the Ananda and then not be doing any kind of EQ whatsoever for the Ananda to be worth it. And that also needs to be, like maybe, you know, you really don't like this headband style, which is fair enough, right? Like I, I understand that. But for me, I complain so much about the lack of cup swivel with these other ones. And then Hi-Fi Man turned around and, and designed this one and basically alleviated that issue. So um, yes, I thoroughly recommend this headphone. I think it could just use a little bit of EQ to t tone down that you know upper treble zinginess. But with that said, you know if you're somebody who never EQs, I can actually see a reason to go for either of the other ones over the Edition XS. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it, and I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.